Now, it's true, of course, that a lot of people can't be trusted, and that so far as oneself is concerned, every one of us has in us what the Hebrews call the Yetzahara. Uh, they say that God made it and put it there. The Yetzahara is the perverse spirit. I call it the element of irreducible rascality. We, we all have that. But in uh, the wisdom of that great moral philosopher Confucius, he included this element of rascality in his definition of human-heartedness. That he put as the crown of all the virtues. It isn't, uh, the, the word in Chinese is often translated humaneness, but it means a good deal more than that. It means being like a human being. That is to say, a complete man or woman, which includes the angel as well as the animal, reason and the passions, and all those aspects of us. Indeed, the great triumph of humanity is to be able to be uh, both angel and devil, both reasonable and passionate, both mystic and sensualist. For he felt, you see, that the, the, this peculiar combination was the whole beauty of human beings. And he, he would trust that humaneness or that human-heartedness. He would put more reliance on that than he would on virtues, righteousness, programmed behavior. And this is a very wise attitude. It isn't, you see, only the goodness in human beings that is to, is to be trusted. They are also to be trusted to be a little bad. They are to be trusted to be selfish. Because you know a person who is not frank about selfishness is a big troublemaker. You may go into a situation with high ideals and say, I promise this, I promise that, I promise the other thing. I will be true, I will knock myself out to achieve this. But the reason you said it was to put on a good front at the moment. And also, to square yourself with your own conscience. You think, well, I, would, I really ought to be that kind of person. And I'm going to commit myself to being that. And in that moment, you have grossly deceived those who depend on you. Why? Because... Uh, even if you keep your word and you are reliable to the extent that you said you would be, they are going to absorb from you by a kind of emotional osmosis the fact that you hate doing it. And that's the condition you see very, many uh, an aging parent gets in when some faithful son or daughter uh, surrenders their own life to look after the invalid. Very nice and noble. to be selfish to a certain extent and you should for yourself be selfish to a certain extent and make it very plain to others what your wishes are. One of, the, my, one of my best friends is a woman who is invariably outspoken and she is never and nobody ever treads on her, nobody ever presumes on her because she doesn't let them. He says, it's inconvenient for me to have you for dinner or to stay or whatever. Uh, I've got something else to do. But the result of this is, I'm very fond of her because you know exactly where you are with her. You don't worry about, am I, push am I imposing or anything like that? You can't impose on her. And it's very, <laughs> it's very refreshing. I like that sort of person. And we have a certain duty, you might say, to be like that to others. Because there is in our nature a, a selfish thing as well as an other regarding thing, tendency. And it's the two of them together that constitute our nature. And it is this nature that's to be trusted. Therefore, righteous people who ignore that they have this uh, element of irreducible rascality or the Yetzahara uh, are great troublemakers. In fact, they've probably made more trouble in the world than deliberately wicked people. 
because they are the people who wage, for example, ideological wars, which are not nice wars waged in order to capture the property and the personnel of the enemy, in which case, you know, one always takes care to preserve them. But their wars waged as a matter of principle, not really between people, but wars between utterly irreconcilable ideas. And in such a fight, there can be no quarter. There can be no quarter between good and evil, because uh, as defined, they're mutually exclusive. But when people fight each other, they are not good, they are not evil, they are people. And that is why wisdom in settling quarrels is always a matter of compromise. That's why a good Confucian always settles disputes out of court. Because somebody eventually says, oh, come off it. Look, we are both rascals, and there let be honor among thieves. And that's the spirit, you know, that's the real spirit of repentance. Not that you say some idiot notion that you're going to turn over a new leaf and kid yourself into the idea that you'll never do a thing like that again. You know very well you will. True repentance is to admit in all humility, you see, that you are not a saint. And therefore, you better not go fooling people that you are because they will rely on you and then be disappointed. So then this is basic trust in yourself, not as a integrated, mature person, not as a, a responsible citizen, but as a human being with your light side and with your dark side, with your outgoing affection as well as your ingoing self-affection. Both must be there. 